What up, everybody? It's Dark Side Vital MX, and today I've got Derek Kelly from AEO Power Sports. What's up, Derek? How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, man. How you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. Just headed up to Washougal for another one. All right. Well, we're going to get into that, but uh, I want to first just touch on your season so far. Probably the best you've ridden outdoors professionally. I mean, obviously, you look at the results. It's the best season you've had. Definitely. Yeah, I'm uh, super stoked on how it's going. Just uh, just excited to keep keep the ball rolling and keep improving every week. Yeah, absolutely. For anybody listening, just to let you guys know, Derek is driving. He's on the road. So if the audio goes in and out, just uh, deal with it. But, yeah, how did the AEO deal come together? Yeah, I mean, uh, last year I was, I was on Teddy Park's team for outdoors. And... Um, I've known Jeremy for a long time, and, and he he's, he helped me out before the, the team even came about with the shop, and, and I ran a suspension for for a couple of years now. So um, just talking with him, he ended up wanting to do a team, and and he ended up uh, putting together what is AEO Power Sports KTM Racing for this year. Yeah, I've heard they have a little bit of factory support, so you've got probably some decent parts. Some maybe the if I'm not mistaken, you told me this was the best bike you've ever rode. Definitely, yeah. I don't know exactly everything that goes into it. Uh, yeah, I'm just a dumb rider, but <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a very competitive bike and uh, best setup I've had so far for sure. Well, I'm pretty. I've been excited about checking in with you again. Like, uh, you know, I've known you for a couple years now. This season's going really well. I believe previously your best finish was a 13th at Hangtown last year. This year, right. you've had uh, three overalls better than that, and hopefully, going to continue to improve. Yeah, no, I last year I made some good strides toward the end of the year, but obviously I had a I have a rest a history of rough starts, to <laughs> say that. So I'm stoked I was able to start this season pretty strong and, and continue to improve a little bit each week. I tied for tenth this weekend and I wanna I wanna crack that top ten by the end of the year. What is it about this bike that you like? You said again the best bike you've ridden. What what is it and what is it about this season? Is it more the bike or is it just the program coming together but first talk about the bike itself right yeah i mean the the motor is really solid and, and super fast i mean it's it's quite a bit better than what i had last year by by a long shot just going to the different tracks i can feel going off a of memory like oh wow this was way harder last year or i was struggling here where where this year i'm able to get over stuff a lot easier and i can pull through the deeper stuff and i'm starting to get some good starts so uh just, just the motor's really strong, and then um, the suspension setup's really good. Like we're able to do a little bit more testing than I was last year, so it's just, a, it's just a full program for sure. Yeah. So, do you have more time during the week? Again, you're, but you're a full privateer. You're driving to the race, right? You're not being flown everywhere. I mean, you may fly to some, but it's still coming out of your, your. You're not. Be, it's not yeah, being no. handled by the team. So, do you have time during the week to test and try different things? It's definitely a squeeze. Like we don't get to do. Like I only get two days a week, whether that be for training or if we we got to make something happen with the bike. And obviously the the team is on a on a budget, and we don't have a lot of manpower as far as that goes. But it's definitely more than anything I've ever had, and and that's that's the the best that that we can do. And it's it's been a big help. I mean, we we switched some some parts out from the first round and and stuff like that. And it's just just fine tuning. Yeah. What do you find the most difficult thing for you just this season uh, as a privateer dealing with, you know, is it finances? Is it travel? What's the most difficult thing to deal with for you personally? Yeah. The most stressful thing is obviously the, the monetary part. I yeah. Mean, it's tough to make, make a living or it's, it's not even to make a living just to make enough to get to the next race. So um, without the support of my parents and, and everything that Jeremy does, like it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't even be a ballpark dream. Uh, yeah, you talked about your dad helping you. I, I got to talk to him a little bit this last weekend, right at Millville. That was him I was talking to, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, yeah. your brother, I guess, is coming to work for us at Vital or has. That's really cool. Yeah. So it's a whole family involvement in the sport. But yeah, your dad seemed really cool. He was, a, I liked him a lot. 
yeah no he's my biggest supporter and and he's all in for sure um he comes to every race with me and and helps out a lot with the money and obviously i live at home with him i'm not able to pay for a for a house or anything like that so he, he's super super excited about being able to watch me grow up and and move into pros and and it's it's been cool to share this journey with him yeah that's great what about the other support you get i know your girlfriend kaylee uh you know other yeah. friends uh, whether it be trainers etc who else do you have in your corner that kind of helps you on a day-to-day basis yeah, I mean, my girlfriend, she's a she's a big, big supporter with with me emotionally and, and whatnot. And then obviously I got my trainers, Evan. Evan Nystrom is my physical guy. And then uh, I have Kevin with uh, Moti, Moti MX Mental Training. He's helped a lot. That's been a new thing for me this year. And then uh, Jay Whipple's my on-the-bike coach. Okay. And then I, uh, I have a new mechanic this year. His name's Scott Youngstrand. And uh, – he, he's been an awesome ad addition to the program. He's got a lot of knowledge behind him and helps a lot with the bike setup. So talk about the mental coach. What has that been like for you this first year? I think you just mentioned using him. What has that helped you with? What have you noticed the difference in and what kind of things do you work on? Yeah, last year, I, uh, I don't know exactly what reason it was, but I seem to have a problem with compounding mistakes. So when I make a mistake, it would just kind of lead into another one. And that's one thing that we worked on a lot at the beginning of this year is is letting stuff go and, and being able to recover, which I think that's been the biggest biggest help for me so far this year. Yeah, I always wonder, uh, uh, for guys like yourself, doing it on your own, all the travel, it, it does take the, – the, the top guys, they have time to decompress. They fly home. They can kind of take a step back for a day. Then they get back on the bike. They have all these people helping them. A guy like yourself – there's a lot of mental stress, I'm sure, or men, just a lot of stuff going on in your head that I have to get this done, I have to get this done, I have to figure out how to get here. Uh, For it, sure. Yeah, it adds so much. Even at the t- highest level, there's a lot of mental issue or a lot of mental stress, and having a mental coach is helpful. But then at your level, just to have somebody that can probably talk you off the cliff almost at times. For sure. And, and I've been a pretty mentally stable, stable dude as far as that goes, but it's definitely some of the stuff we work on, it's – it's uh, basically focus on what's important now, and uh, it's an acronym. The acronym is WIN, and, and it helps you win. I mean, you, you focus on what's important when you're at the races and, and during training, and, and you're able to compartmentalize most of the, the negative stuff and, and focus on what's important. Talk about the team under the tent. You have the, the mechanics. You have Amanda, who's the team manager. Then you have... A couple of really good, successful riders as teammates, including Josh Varese, and of course Austin Black came back. Um, what's it like just being under the tent on a Saturday with those guys? Is it a pretty comfortable family type environment, or is it like, oh, we all keep to ourselves? Oh, definitely. It's it's honestly it's it's a big family, and, and everybody gets along really well. It's it's a whole lot of jokes and, and ribbing each other. So good. this is a fun environment. Everybody everybody gets along really good, and and there's not a not a whole lot of drama. You know, it's just everybody knows what they have to do, and, and everybody gets along really well. Well, that yeah, that adds to the success you're having this year. Do you feel like that's the key? Well, obviously, the starts are the key, but is that the thing that you need to work on the most is getting out of the gate and I would assume some aggression, right? Because it's real easy to get pinched off pretty quick. Definitely. Yeah, that's what we've been working on for the last two, three weeks, ever since like red, Bud, I really been focusing on doing starts off a, off a gate every day mm-hmm. on the, on the weekdays. And, and it's helped a lot. I mean, this weekend I was able to get darn near top 10 starts every, every time. And now it, it just opens up a new can of worms of things I have to work on because I'm used to coming from the back and battling with those guys when they're, they're already kind of worn out and tired and, and, when they're fresh, they're actually pretty fast. So I got to get used to, I got to get used to that pace right up, right up front in the beginning. And that's just a learning experience for sure. Yeah. Just even in qualifying, I would assume I talk, I've talked to a lot of guys that are like first year pros and Mm -hmm. learning to put heaters in immediately lap one in qualifying is very, very difficult for a lot of guys. And I I assume it's kind of the same in a race, right? Like you kind of want to settle in and then hammer down, but you have to all day long at a pro race, whether it's qualifying or whether it's gate drop in race time, you've got to be at a hundred percent, almost a hundred percent of the time. 
No, for sure. It's, it's, I mean, we're, we're the racing the fastest in the world. So it's, everybody's on the top of their game and nobody's given an inch. So, I mean, especially in qualifying, going to a new track you've never been to, been to before, a lot of times first qualifying is one to two seconds a lap faster um, than second qualifying. So you, you have to throw down a fast time. And you, you honestly, when you're throwing down a fast time, you don't really get to learn the track yeah. as, as well as you would if you were doing just a 15 minute practice, trying different lines and stuff. You just basically hammer in the line that's, that you think is the fastest at that moment. And a lot of times when it comes to the first gate drop, the track's completely different than, than you were when you were out there. Yeah. I guess that goes back to what you just said a minute ago. It's a learning experience, right? This is only your second full season outdoors pro, I believe. Uh, I think, I think it's my third for, in the 250 class. I, I had a, a abbreviated season in 2020, okay. but, uh, yeah, so this is, hopefully this will be my first, first full year doing all the rounds. Yeah. That's kind of what I mean. I didn't think 2020 you did all the rounds. So full, full season, all the rounds and every week seems to get a little better. You, you had a couple down weeks, but I think you crashed it, uh, like red bud, like four or five times you said. So that. We, we, yeah. You just got to get rid of that stuff, you know, obviously clean that up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. I just, I couldn't stay off the ground these last <laughs> few rounds and then South was a new one for me. And yeah. I just go there at night. And well, hey, Derek, I'm stoked. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. The, the rest of the tracks I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with. So it'll, uh, hopefully just be, a, a continual. All right. Well, hey, we're losing you again. So let's wrap this up. I, I look forward to – I'm looking for that top 10. I'm, count, I'm, I'm counting on it because I don't even know if I can take you in fantasy. That doesn't matter. I just want to see it for my buddy. But, Derek, thanks for always having time for us, man. Yeah, I can't – it's breaking up. So I will – I'll holler at you soon. Good luck this weekend. I'll talk to you soon, man. Thanks. Thanks.